Hey guys, Doug here, and I just want to share you guys my journey of how I became a millionaire by the age of 30. I'm currently 32, but I was able to get the net worth of a millionaire by age of 30. And I'm not going to tell you like, this is the way to do it in order to get it because every single person journey is different and the life circumstance is different. I just want to share you my personal journey. And it's not that I can't putting money into stocks and investments and investing in real estate my whole life. I did it. I only started that about a year ago when I actually really understood what it means to invest. It's just that how I came to that in the last two years to really exponential my wealth tremendously and hopefully this video is here just to kind of help you guys if anything i went through in my life may help you then i'm glad or, or give you that motivation to get there and give you some ideas to get there so with that being said i appreciate you guys smashing the like button so i just want to kind of share you my current net worth it's not liquid where i have a million dollar cash if i need to i would actually have to sell a lot of stuff i i'm currently worth uh, at the time of this recording one million ninety thousand dollars you can see I have $64,000 in cash. Investment, these are just stocks, different brokerage. I have about 534,000 in stocks. And my credit card debt right now is $2,000. My mortgage, so I own three properties, one where I'm currently living and two in a different state in Texas. I have three mortgages, which is $861,000 in loans. And then my assets, all my cars, all my houses together is $1.3 million. So with all the debt minus, I'm over that $1 million mark. Now, I started working when I was age 16 at Albertsons, which is a grocery chain. I did grocery bagging. I cleaned up the aisles, I cleaned up the restrooms, and I took carts. And I brought those carts back in to customers and helped them bring their groceries to their cars. I started at a young age at 16 while I was a sophomore in high school because I knew I just wanted to work and make money. Now, I was always taught, uh, I was very blessed with my family, always taught me the value of money. Now, I am very fortunate with my parents. They had no debt. They put a roof over my head. They took me on family vacations and I didn't have to pay for college. I did not have a scholarship. I was not smart enough to get a scholarship. So, but I had to take a the lowest way to pay into college, not like a huge university. I graduated from Cal State Fullerton, which is a lesser form of university. So it's around about 10 to $12,000 a year of college fees. And my parents paid for it as long as I got grades in school and maintained some type of GPA and had some plan for my future. So I was very fortunate not to take any college debt. So I really thank them for that. And part of that is that if I worked and went to school, I didn't have to pay for college. So that's the deal my parents uh, required me and I was able to keep that. So I worked at in Albertsons at the age of 16. I forgot the year, but I was, the minimum wage at that time was $6.75 in the state of California. And as a high school student, you couldn't work more than 20 hours a week. So I only worked about four days a week for four hours each. On the weekend, they allowed me to do eight hours. It can't be more than four hours during a school day. Now, my parents never taught me about the stock market or invest in real estate. They just told me it's important to save money and not spend it all. So what I did was just put it in the savings account. And back then, savings account interest rate was actually pretty good at 4%. It's nowhere near that to this day, but I always had that in my mind. My dad always told me the stock market is a good way to invest, but I had not made enough money to invest in the stock market because back then, back then you need a minimum. You couldn't really put orders online. You had to call someone and have a brokerage account. So my parents couldn't give me a stock brokerage. If, if anything, I would have put my money into the stock market because I just heard over time makes money. And my parents did uh, went through the housing crisis and all those other crises that you went through, but we were able to survive because my parents were that smart with their money. So I always had that mindset of just saving my money. So I started at 675 at Albertsons, and then later that year, I was a swim coach, competitive swim coach. And during those two years, the max I made was only $2,000. Now that was actually a lot for me at the time. And for any 16 year old to have $2,000 in their bank account, it's phenomenal. And you gotta keep in mind, $2,000 back then is worth a lot more than what is now due to inflation. So I continued working at several different minimum jobs. Uh, after the swim coach, I worked at Lucille's Smokehouse Barbecue, where I was host, bringing people to their seat at restaurants, helped them with their takeout orders. Then I worked at AMC and got promoted to a shift 
uh, a shift uh, manager where I did help the, run the floor to make sure the theater is clean, the concession stands, and put film in the projection while I was in college. And I worked as a Starbucks barista where I got fired because I showed up too late too many times because I had to wake up at 4 a.m. to get to my work at 4.30. And you know, sometimes I'm just way too tired. I just couldn't adapt to that shift. So I did get fired from my job. But all those jobs I had did not make more than $8 an hour. At that time, I was around 21 to 22, and I only had around $6,000 to my name, just saving my money through all the several jobs and through the schooling over years. And I took a couple years off in school from working by continued work as a psychology degree. In my last year of my psych degree uh, as a senior in college, I was just bored out of my mind and I was trying to be a psychologist to work with people with psychological issues or behavior issues to make them get better because I like to work with people. I know my parents wanted me to be a doctor or lawyer or the president of the United States. I'm sorry, mom, dad, it didn't go there, but hey, I was able to make a life for myself and you're very happy for me because I have a wonderful wife and I got my house. But with that being said, I didn't have much money to my name. All I knew was savings. I had no idea how to invest at all. and. My last year in college, I was like, okay, I have to figure out what I need to do. While well, I was figuring out, I love playing video games. I play every brand new AAA games. That's how I spent my money. I just play new games. So I decided, you know what? YouTube was uh, YouTube was you know, a thing where people could put some gameplay. You couldn't make money on YouTube during this time. So this was 2012, where I decided to record myself, play these new games that people are interested in, and just talk while I played it. It's called a Let's Play in the gaming community. I put it on YouTube, and it was the Wild West back then where everyone was just uploading constantly, and there was not heavy competition. It was based on subscriber growth. And over that time, I was able to monetize my video and I was making about $300 a month when I was making $1,000 $1, per month. After two years of doing it to, up from 2012, 2014, I was so stoked realizing I made so much more money than I ever had in my life. So I had around 7,000, 7,500 just doing uh, YouTube for two years. And I was very happy with that. But at the same time, I didn't want my psychology degree to go to waste. So while I was still doing YouTube, uh, making about two to three thousand dollars a month at that point, I decided to uh, work with children who might have early onset autism. So I worked with children ages one all the way to three years old and help them develop their motor skills, the way they can speak, the way they can touch different objects, the way they try to communicate, and try my best to get them. Uh, to the higher spec, uh, higher end of the autism spectrum, so they have better function, or just get them off the spectrum together. And there's some cases where some of these kids, they were just so severe that there's not much you could have done. You can just only try to help them somewhat. The parents understand what their kid is trying to communicate with them. At that time, I was uh, making about five to six thousand dollars on YouTube just playing video games, and my YouTube was skyrocketing. Uh, thousands of subscribers each month. And at this time, I did not invest. I didn't know anything about investments at all. I was just putting a savings account the whole time, all the way up to age of 28. Uh, so at age of 28, I had around $450,000 in my savings account, not invested, not knowing what I was doing. All I knew was to save, uh, spend as little as I can and make as much money as I can. And then I'll figure out from there. So I would, and then my dad told me, you should start putting this in a savings account. Uh, I mean, not in a savings account, in, in your retirement account, when you do your taxes, just put it into an IRA account or 401k. So that's what I did from age of 28 all the way to 29. I was just putting in my Fidelity account and I just bought mutual funds. I didn't know anything about mutual funds, ETFs, or anything like that, or individual stock companies. I just put it in a high growth one, a medium, medium growth company, in a small growth company, um, uh, the Russell. And that's all I did was just put money into that for several years. And I had about $20,000 into my retirement account and about 450,000 into my uh, just savings account over the several years of doing YouTube and all my savings. And then that's until when I uh, realized I wanted to get married, have a wife and family, get a house and be able to understand the stock market properly uh, during that time. So the, during the 2018 to 2019 era, I started researching stocks. 
And I ran into financial education, Jeremy. Everyone knows Jeremy. A lot of people run into him. And I was just seeing him so bullish on stocks. So uh, since he was such a hype man, I just started investing in stocks. And then I started watching as many videos as I can investing in the stock market. So I watched like 10 different YouTubers how to get a really start in the stock market, how to build wealth, how, what's a dividend stock, how to do a tax advantage account. I learned all that in a span of one year uh, and then in, at the eight, at 2020, I bought my first house or late 2019, 20, 2019, I bought my first house, the one I'm currently living in. And I was able to buy it for $770,000 and I had to put 20% down. So I had to dip into some of my brokerage account. So I put about $250,000 down in order to get like a 25% uh, equity into my house. And I was getting married. So during that time in 2020, I was starting to really understand the stock market, investing in different stocks like Tesla, Apple, Google, Amazon. And I realized I needed to diversify my wealth after the stock market tanked in 2020 around March when pandemic was everywhere and the stock market went down. I was I sold a lot of assets where I just said, you know, what, I just need some cash right now while the stock market was tanking. But then I just started seeing a lot of companies value was way below what it should be. So I bought into it early during the dip and just kept buying into dip. And then luckily those stocks had been huge in 2020. During that time, I was like, this is a good time when everyone was so scared of just going outside the house, having to wear a mask. Only during this time, people only went to groceries and they went home and that's it. And you just watch the news all the time, what's going on with the pandemic and what's going on around the whole world. I was like, this is a great time to buy investment properties. I had no idea how to be a landlord. So what I do, I did what I did learning about the stock market was I researched different videos, watched different videos, how to buy a property, how to get an investment property, what to look for, how to find a tenant, how to renovate your home. So I watched a lot of Meet Kevin, Graham stuff, and, and, so, and uh, Bigger Pockets and all that stuff. And then, so during March all the way to July, I was still, I decided, you know what, let's make a finance channel. This is how you guys are seeing me now. Just talk about my experience about the stock market investment. I bought two properties in 2021 and in July and then no one in in um, October in Austin, Texas area. And this was before Elon Musk announced Tesla was gonna build there. I just knew that Apple campus was gonna be there. And it was a huge place because South by Southwest, I go there often because video game companies send me there, YouTube and Google brings me to South by Southwest to cover products. So I knew it was gonna be huge and I was able to buy all these under market and before uh, anyone else could put an offer because I just looked at, stared at Zillow and then I told my agent, go there, do FaceTime with me, get me that property. And I would drive out that 20 hours from California to Texas, renovate the house and immediately put on rental market. And I manage all those properties myself. I don't have to be there. I could be from California and still managing Texas property. People think it's really hard and you need a management company and you need to pay uh, 10, uh, 10, that 10% so you don't even have to think about it. It's very easy. If they need to contact you, they'll email you. If it's an emergency, they'll call you. Look for Yelp, look for the cheapest rate, and look for the highest quality. Just call someone there, and they take care of it, and my tenants are wonderful. I do a great background check. I check their employment history, and they've been taking good care of me, and I do the same thing. I don't like to be those cheap scum lord who try to squeeze every penny. As long as my mortgage is covered and I still have extra money and cash flow, I am happy uh, enough to keep them in place. So during that time, that that three year period of 2018 to 2020, I grew that $500,000 uh, that I had in my bank account into over a million. Now keep in mind, I kept working and kept doing my YouTube channels. I kept doing my gaming live streams and still be making money that way. But I continued investing constantly and be, making smart decisions with my money. So with that being said, I wish I knew everything about investing properly in the stock market and real estate and crypto and all that things. So I could have took that back then when I was 16 years old, working as a grocery bagger at $6.75 a month and so just put in savings. Now it's more so easy just to sign up on like apps, uh, trading apps. I don't recommend Robinhood because there's a lot of issues I have with them. But if you, but most people, young people these days, they go in Robinhood just because it's the uh, Interface is genius of how simple and easy it is and addictive it is. 
But I was always smart in the decision that I'm a long-term investor and I like to look at a company in long-term so I'm not gambling to be a rich quick uh, which uh, rich quick system, so, but also be able to have some fun in speculative markets. So if I could tell myself any now that there's so many young people now these days that there's YouTube's more prevalent and information is more ready available. During that time, when you're 16, put half of your money into spend, feel free to spend half your money for whatever fun you worked hard, you you're, you earned it. But try put the remaining. Put 30% of that into an investment for long-term and don't think about it. Put another 10% in your retirement or set aside for retirement when you've done your taxes. Uh, and that 10% is just that little buffer period. And then and then by the time you're, you're ready to actually buy your first house, you have the money and equity there and you know how to negotiate for a cheaper rate on your house or do a refinance. And then, after, and then when you have your first house, Keep setting money aside into expense, fun, in the stock market, and then try to save some up for real estate so you can diversify different passive incomes to that nature. So that was how I was able to jump from five hundred thousand dollars from like doing eight years of work from sixteen all the way to twenty, or no, it's eight years, yeah, twenty to twenty-two, and then the last three years just blowing up by double. It's just being able to invest wisely. So hopefully this video will help you guys gave you some type of motivations. Um, you know, all I always say is do what Warren Buffett says. People ask Warren Buffett, how come you tell everyone how to invest and no one, no one uh, does the same thing you do to do it? And he says, it's because people don't have the patience to grow their wealth slowly. They want to do quick, get rich quick. And that's why you see a lot of these YouTubers are really kind of making it harder for people to get rich overall. It's better to build your wealth slowly than trying just to, to YOLO everything in one investment in one crypto. That's why I like the diversity of everything in long-term growth instead of like putting it all on these speculative EV companies like people are throwing into Lucid, uh, Lord Towns Mortars, Nikola. Remember Nikola when that was huge and all these other companies. Why do that? Why do that when it can take you a, a, a little bit longer and say get richer in a couple of months or a year why not do what I did in the last three years just put it up to different ways to make it grow rich a little bit slowly it's still quicker than just putting in a savings account where it, it robs you due to inflation so hopefully that helped you guys I appreciate thumbs up and I will link a video at the end to ways to build wealth quickly and how to you know get a mortgage how to get proper properties, tenants, and all that nature, and what type of stocks I like to invest in.